Hey boys and girls, welcome back to Monroe Live YouTube. And today I'm with Julian and with Andy. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a little bit about what happens when we take out the battery on the Cybertruck. So um, I'm gonna have the guys that actually did the work or know what was done uh, do the description. And so Andy's gonna talk to us a little bit about um, the bolts that were, you had to remove the uh, the front kick panel and stuff like that. And then Julian's gonna tell us a little bit about what it takes to disarm this thing, pull out the, uh, the electrics and uh, not get killed. So why don't you start it off here, Andy, and talk okay. about what happened inside and what's gonna ha be happening shortly. So up in the front, in your kick panel area, you have three big bolts on each side. So you have them on the driver's side and on the passenger side. Moving towards the back of the vehicle on the top side, you actually have two bolts in the bed area that also need to come out on each side. And then moving down towards the bottom, you'll see right here, along this, you have an array of bolts on both sides, and you have another set of bolts up here in the front. And these are gonna be coming so, out shortly, right? Yes. Um, yep. But before we talk about that, Julian, why don't you tell us about what you did in the back here to make sure that we uh, don't kill ourselves? Sure. So uh, for this battery pack removal, uh, there are a few steps that we uh, normally follow in removing a battery pack. And if we go to the rear here, we can see uh, some of what's fairly typical between other EVs and uh, some of the other Teslas. Uh, we can see here we've got an array of high voltage cables. Uh, that interface with the penthouse, which on this appears to be a little bit different from what we've uh, seen in some previous Tesla uh, battery packs. Uh, these would need to be disconnected. We then check for a voltage. Uh, ideally, we'd like to see zero volts, which means that the contactors have opened inside of this pack, so the high voltage circuit is not active. Uh, the contactors will open after we have disengaged the 12 volt system, uh, or the low voltage system rather, on the vehicle. Um, so these are disengaged, uh, attaching to the pack, and we have an additional cable here you'll see is still connected. That snakes around to the front, and so this is actually supplying power to the front drive unit. So uh, this cable is left connected here simply because it's carried by the pack during installation, and at the front we've disconnected it from that drive unit. Uh, one other thing that you need to factor in with this from a high voltage perspective is for the charge cable, Tesla uses rigid aluminum cables to go from the charge port on the side of the vehicle to the battery pack, which is connected in Z as the battery is decked. Uh, normally, we can access that under the second row seat at the penthouse, but because this has a slightly different architecture, we have the penthouse right here. We actually had to go in through the bed of the vehicle, remove a panel, and then sort of fish our way in. Um, it looked like the mechanism that actually helps roll up the tonneau cover is something that we had to, uh, we had to snake kind of past that, so we did have to rotate that at a couple different angles to get access to all the proper connectors there. Uh, but once we got those disengaged, uh, from a high voltage perspective, all of the uh, battery connections were loosened up and then it was uh, simply just the structural elements anchoring this pack to the vehicle. So the big thing about this truck is similar to what we saw in the Model Y in that um, the seats, the carpet, and some of the other uh, paraphernalia like the center console and whatnot, they all get loaded in at the same time. By my reckoning, um, doing things this way saves, um, saves assembly line costs of somewhere between six and $800,000 by using this idea. Now, um, I don't know why it is that we never thought about this before, loading the, loading the floor in at the same time as the, um, as the seats and whatnot, but my guess is it's because of unibody. Because we kept going with unibody, because no one ever challenged unibody, something that was done in the 50s, we never really thought that hard about what could be done as opposed to what we were told to do. So at the end of the day, um, this idea right here is brilliant as far as I'm concerned. So now what we've got to do is get out of the way so that these, ho these bolts here holding the, um, holding the battery pack in along the rockers, we're gonna let them uh, take these things out. That'll be done in a hurry and then we'll be back 
and then we're going to drop the battery pack so that you can see how what this genius looks like and by the way um we're standing under my favorite absolutely new favorite toy this uh ben packed uh lifter that we've got elevator we've got and what we're going to do is we're going to once we've got all these bolts out we're going to drop it using the ben pack unit and then get it out of the way and by the way we also have a bunch of brand new uh ben pack um hoists uh, I've, I've got to tell you, we are pretty happy with these things so far. Um, I, I'm happy. I'll be talking a little bit about that in a separate video, but uh, this, I'm happy. So anyway, I'm going to get out of the way so these guys can yank the bolts out and we can get going. This is pretty damn good from, a, from an assembly standpoint. Maybe we have to pull back some cables or something, but this is really, really well designed. And, uh, and I give Tesla a lot of credit. This is magnificent. This is a great, great design. So anyhow, um, we'll be talking to you more about what goes on next, but we thought we'd give you a little treat and show you what happens on how to get how to get the battery pack out of the way and, and, and how much easier it is to do this type of a design versus anything else that anybody's got. Anyway, that's me. Uh, Julian, got anything else you want to say? Uh, no, I think uh, this, yeah, looks like it's a, a pretty natural progression from what we saw with the 4680 Model Y. Uh, we've got a lot of similar characteristics here. We've got a lot of the uh, the HVAC ducting carried here, seat brackets, seats, and yeah, to Sandy's point, this uh, opens up a lot of opportunity for assembly efficiency and uh, obviously getting the pack out and getting it in. Uh, it uh, it's you know uh, quite a game changer relative to uh, how how we see a lot of these other packs uh, you know installed. So yeah, from a structure point, this is this is pretty amazing. Uh, it, with just being able just to bolt this up in the place, it's definitely innovative. You got the three bolts up here, as you see, the ones on along, along the side, the couple that you have in the back, these are the three in the front, um, the couple in the back, and this is your whole floor and, and essentially your whole structure for the center section of the vehicle. It's definitely, definitely innovative. Yeah, so at the end of the day, um, I used to make a lot of feed and rundown stations for uh, bolt systems. I believe I could do this in one station. I believe that I could shove that up and have basically a fairly massive rundown station that would feed the bolts to the drivers and run them down into the nuts that you've seen across the top here, all along the top. I, I can do this. I think I can load it in one station and maybe run it down in a station after that. Two stations versus maybe <laughs> mm, It'd be quite a few. 12, 14, something like that. Yeah. The time it saves is just yeah. a lot. It's a lot of time on the assembly line that it saves. Not only that, I don't have to try and fish the, the, the seats through the doorways, which sometimes people make mistakes. It's just it happens and you bang you bang the fenders or you bang uh, the, the surrounds or Maybe the, uh, maybe the uh, what do you call it, the bulb seals? This never is going to happen. It's just straight up and down. This is, this is really, really good. And that's maybe one of the reasons why they have 40-second station systems, or 43-second 
for stations versus everybody else at 60. So anyways, as things happen, boys and girls, we'll be letting you know at least the important things, things that are, are really going to be brilliant. And uh, so stay tuned and keep watching Monroe Live. Thank you so much.